this this show made me filled me with angst. It was one of the hardest shows I've had to watch in, in good ways and bad ways. Like it is amazing to see this journey and and what this show tells. How did you imagine this role when you started playing it? Like how do you get into that? Um, well, I, thankfully, I had the benefit of a couple of months between taking the role and starting the role because it actually went through a bunch of different permutations in my imagination before we we got into it. Um, and I think I needed all of that time to get to the place that I ultimately got to uh, that you see on screen because, you know, he is such an outlandishly villainous character. Um, just the outcomes of, of his surgeries are just so spectacularly bad and his behavior is, is so spectacularly bad that in the beginning it was hard for me to get past my own judgments of him. And it took me some time to, uh, to work my way into uh, accepting him as, at face value and, and, and getting into the, to, uh, the, the psychology and the emotional space that he, he was in, um, where he was the hero of his own journey rather than me judging the outcome rather than the, uh, the, the path that led him there. Well, you know, that first shot of you, you did an amazing job. It, it, it stuck with me every scene you were in. Thank the you. first shot, I, I think to me, you get that immediate sense. You, there's a gravitas that you, you had there, the shot yeah, they, of him older. Yeah. That the, um, <laughs> they, that shot in particular. So I had a really specific idea and, and it may sound odd, but if you watch that shot, he doesn't, or I don't blink for the entirety of it. And it's such a sort of non-human lizard like thing to do to just have this unbroken stare. And I, I knew that it would be incredibly off putting I mean, it's it's odd when somebody just stares directly into your eyes anyway, and just holds that stare for a long time. It it is it's disconcerting, right? It's culturally not something that we do. So and it's never done where we break the fourth wall. So to start the to I just knew that I had this really particular image in my head of that of that shot of this like this the face of this man as the whole world has collapsed and he's wearing the burden of his own self but not letting the audience off the hook right not allowing you to break the gaze as he just stares right into your living room so yeah i mean it was a it was a very intense uh experience because it was filled with moments like that and and i I'm very happy that that it worked for you. I mean, it, you know, we put a lot of of care into the craft of this one. You know, I I have some lighter questions we'll get to, but one more <laughs> thing I want to know is, you know, there's there's part of the story that I read at least, and I don't know if that's an intention or not, but that it's almost the whole failing upwards that certain people with the right connections can do anything despite the laws. Uh, is some of this built in? <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, of course. I, I mean, as much as, um, you know, Dunch himself is responsible for his actions, um, he, he didn't happen in a vacuum. And one of the things that the show is trying to examine is, is exactly that. Like, why do we give the benefit of the doubt to certain people? And inside the culture that you and I are both raised in, why does that certain person look like a tall white male with a degree? And and there's a class element to this too, even though he technically didn't come from sort of a, you know, a landed gentry family, but, you know, he has all the affectations of a certain class of human being and, the, the, you know, a, a presentation and a bearing um, that we have traditionally been told like, oh, he checks off all these boxes, so he must be credible, a decent person. And then... You know, when you match that inside of a system that privileges profit above all else, um, you can come out with some horrendous outcomes. And he, you know, Dunch is obviously an outlier inside of the American medical system, but he's not an impossibility. That that was one of the scariest things for me is that, you know, when I when I first 
came in contact with this when I was listening to the podcast, I wanted there to be a simple answer. I wanted him to be a psychopath or I wanted him to be something where I could just be like, okay, that's digestible and I get that. But the reality is, is that while he is an outlier, his outcomes are not. And the, the, the system that, that protected him would protect another doctor in exactly the same way. Right. None, none of the problems that created Dr. Dunch have been resolved since Dr. Dunch went to jail. And that's that is both scary, but it's also to me the the scariest thought that I had over the course of making this show was not that the system was broken and allowing Dr. Dunch, but that the system was designing was 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 acting as it was intended to in protecting Dr. Dunch and and ultimately the institutions that employed him because he was more valuable than the broken bodies. And it, it speaks to me too, that while it could happen in Canada, it is so much more likely to see this come out of the States and the, the healthcare system that exists there too. Or at least that's my and interpretation. Inept, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, what I was gonna say is that an inept doctor can happen in any system, right? The, the individual failing is possible anywhere and nobody is a hundred percent safe and there's no perfect system here or anywhere else on the planet right the difference is that one of the reasons why christopher dunch was allowed to do this 33 times is that let's just say at his first institution when 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 he got shuffled out of baylor it was more expensive for Baylor to get sued by Christopher Dunch than it was for them to get sued by the patients that he'd mangled. And so they made a, a, an actuarial calculation and said, okay, well, we'll take on the cost of, of um, paying out these, these victims because their, their damages are limited by tort reforms inside of the state of Texas. And thereby, we just kind of move on with our lives. In the Canadian system, that's just not the case. Right? right there is the so I don't think you couldn't you would never end up with a with patient 33 in Canada you just because there's just not because patients are put above profit inside of the system nobody would be allowed especially in such a, um, a highly specialized discipline as spinal surgery where the pass fail of the outcome is you know you're not talking about somebody like with a with a poorly set broken finger, you know what I mean? Right. Like you're talking about somebody who will never walk again or who will, li who will live in excruciating pain for every moment of their natural born life. That, that would not be allowed to happen inside of a system that actually puts the patient at the top of the list of, of things to be protected. For sure. Well, the last thing I wanna know is can you just talk about the rest of your cast because they do an amazing job of grounding this, but also providing, I mean, there's some levity and just some some other angles on this whole story and the people who are actually fighting him. Well, I think, I mean, one, I give credit to Patrick McManus for recognizing that because, because this story is so heavy, if there wasn't levity, I don't think you would make it through all eight hours, right? But also the human experience is not, <sighs> Right. right. We all deal with difficult situations in different ways. And one of the ways we deal with them, particularly doctors, I mean, I don't know if you know any doctors, but doctors have the darkest sense of humor <laughs> of any group of people other than maybe comedians that I've ever come across. And so, you know, people deal with these difficult things in, in many different ways. And I think that was necessary for the story that we were telling that that, you know, that. <laughs> There has to be some lightness in life. And I, I think it's a great credit to every single person who was in front of the camera on this show that they, they, they understood the assignment, right? That all of these people needed to be recognizable human beings because the scenario, the story that we were telling was so outlandish that it could have easily tipped into melodrama and everybody did their job of, of trying to ground it in as humanly recognizable behaviors as possible. Well, congratulations, really. I, I, I am looking forward to seeing the rest of it. it. It's a tremendous show. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. So I hope you enjoy the rest. Have a great day.